Is that not so cool? Beautiful, beautiful insect. This is a gorgeous specimen. Come here, cutie. So see how she's flapping her wings? She's warming up those wing muscles. Vespula squamosa, southern yellow jacket. Here we go. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now, today I'm on the hunt for a really cool species of hornet, the southern yellow jacket. Now, in really good habitat, it's still just barely on the cusp of spring. So these beautiful hymenopterans are tucked away in these little hibernation chambers underneath some logs. So we're going to try flipping them. Hopefully we find one and hopefully we can test out the sting of Vespula squamosa, the southern yellow jacket. Let's go. No dice. So come and take a look at this, guys. Take a look at these really cool shelf fungi. So these are Basidiomycota which is a group of fungi. And these are the fruiting bodies, essentially. So they're mycelium. The main structure of this fungus is inside this, this dead tree. And it is decomposing and eating all that organic material that's inside this tree. So these are really, really cool saprophytic fungi. And they're not parasitic because this tree is dead and they only feed on dead trees. Um, but look at that, these are really impressive. Lots of cool little shelf fungi. Not what I'm looking for per se, but uh, just gotta take what, what the good word gives you, so. We spent a large majority of our time fruitlessly flipping logs looking for hibernating yellow jacket queens. Okay guys, check this out, come here. Where'd you go? There you are. This right here is an Elateridae larva. So this is actually a beetle larva. It's pretty similar in appearance to something like a mealworm or superworm, uh, but this is actually a click beetle larva and they are carnivorous. So they live in these rotted logs and they hunt other soft bodied beetle larva, like scarabs or cerambycids and things like that. Isn't that crazy? So he's a hunter. He's not eating the de decomposing wood like most of the other beetle larva species that he's gonna run into. He's a carnivore. How cool is that? Just kidding. So we'll throw him back, watch him go right underneath all this wood. And there he goes, off to hunt more beetles. Set that back carefully. Cool. Well, let's see if we can find some wasps. We have also been flipping many, many invasive Solenopsis Invicta red imported fire ant colonies. And they have been letting us know just how angry they are with us. All right, we're gonna check this log. It's got a good feeling, it's a nice big log. It's got a nice moisture barrier. That means it's sitting low enough in the ground that it holds a lot of moisture in so that the that the wasps can kind of burrow into that soft wood. So let's take a look here. Fingers crossed. Oh, sure enough, check this out, guys. This is exactly what we're looking for. Oh, let me get my container. This is, where's my container? Fall out of my pocket. I guess so. Well, I've got my trusty tweezers, so we'll improvise. Come here. 
take a look at this beautiful insect. Now this, oh, she's she's been hibernating under this log. So she's still a little groggy. It's just now starting to warm up. But this right here is Vespula squamosa or the Southern Yellow Jacket. So she's warming up her flight muscles, but I don't want her to get away. Look at that. Is that not, oh. Come here. It would be really nice if I didn't lose my container. Take a look. Take a look at this beautiful. Coming down a little bit now. Take a look. Cleaning her antenna. Wow, wow, wow. Is that not so cool? Oh. Come here, cutie. Wacko! I think I can flip this one. It looks pretty heavy. You can do it. Structural integrity fit. Oh, it's full of fire ants. Uh. Pro tip. If a log is full of fire ants, most likely that is the only thing it's full of. Because just like people, the rest of the animal kingdom tends to avoid fire ants. All right, guys, come here, flip this out. Come around. <laughs> you got it, you got it. <laughs> okay, luckily. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Shut up. Luckily, we have just unearthed another Vespula squamosa southern yellow jacket. Let's take a look. So you can see up here her little chamber that she's made. And here she is, right here, waiting for warm weather. Now it's actually starting to warm back up here in Texas. Hey, come here. Come here, cutie. So see how she's flapping her wings? She's warming up those wing muscles. So she's kind of pumping her abdomen. It's getting her blood flowing. So, unlike what I did with the other one, I'm going to grab this one with my tweezers before she is warmed up, so I don't lose her. Okay. Take a look. Like that. Wow. Can you see that beautiful, beautiful insect? This is a gorgeous specimen. Vespula squamosa southern yellow jacket. These are social wasps, so once the um, weather starts to warm up, she will crawl out. She'll probably stick up underneath uh, maybe a larger tree, kind of a cavity. She will collect little little filaments by scraping her, her mandibles on wood. She'll mix that with saliva, and she will actually make a paper nest with the help of her mini offspring. Look at that. Is that not a beautiful insect right there? Wow. Look. Look at those eyes, those nice compound eyes, those big mandibles. Isn't that awesome? Now these particular hornets are feeding on sugars and proteins, uh, like most hymenopterans. So she's looking for tree sap, for sm small soft-bodied insects like caterpillars, grasshoppers, and things like that. And she'll bring all those dead insects back to her colony, her nest, and she'll feed them to the larva, which they house in those kind of hexagonal little pockets that they make in those nests. Isn't that cool? What a cool little creature. So hopefully she's woken up enough. Uh, we're going to test the sting of the southern yellow jacket because I've done so many exotic insects 
Um, and I realized that you guys don't really have a frame of reference uh, for some of these. So if I was able to sting myself with something, say like a yellow jacket or some of the other polysties, which I'm hoping to do this year, I might be able to equate some of those other stings to stings that you at home may have already encountered. Things like fire ants and yellow jackets and polistes paper wasps, right? So we are going to test the sting of this beautiful hymenopteran. Are you guys ready? So you come and get a close up shot of this. So we've got our beautiful Vespula squamosa southern yellow jacket. Here we go. Ooh! Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> That's really bad. Oh. Did you guys take take a look at what's already going on in my arm here? Immediate redness. You can see where she initially stung me. Wow, girly, I'm impressed. That was really bad. Um, wow. Ouch. Wow, that's really good. Now, take into reference that this is a nice-sized little queen. Oh, sh 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 she's upset now. I've upset her. You're okay. You're all right. Look now. Look at that. Wow. That was really striking and really immediate pain. It's kind of starting to die down now. Um, but as far as intensity goes, that was one of the more painful stings I've encountered. Take a look at that little bleeding under the skin. They've got massive stingers. You can already see that my body's reacting all the way to here now, all that red speckling. That was a nice, good sting. She's resting now. Oh, don't sting me on the hand. Oh. Come here. Oh, let's just get her back in these. Take a look at that. Take a look at that. Oh my gosh, guys. That really hurt bad. Which begs the question again. Let's see. One more time. Vespula squamosa. Get a nice, good shot of that. She's rip-roaring, ready to go. Okay, definitely not as intense as the last sting. She definitely got me with a lot of venom the last time. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh yeah, so she's just barely poking in that stinger. Come on. Don't be shy. Oh, there was a little bit of a stick. Well, she seems tired. So let's get a shot of her crawling on my arm here. Look at that. That is a beautiful, beautiful Vespula squamosa, southern yellow jacket. See, completely unharmed, completely unfazed. Oh. And there she goes. <laughs> but look at that. That was a good, that was a good bit of a uh, sting there. I would say as far as intensity goes, that was, uh, I'd say that was comparable to the Mermesia, the Bulldog Ants, and maybe even the Bullet Ant, as far as intensity. Now it's starting to go down, uh, but you can see very violent reaction here. Already some light swelling around the epicenter. But yeah, that was a really painful sting. I'm impressed. Um, but like I said, we're looking for them in these little hibernation chambers. So flipping logs just like this one, it's a really good way to find these really beautiful uh, southern yellow jackets. Wow, so that's impressive. That really, uh, that stings. <laughs> Get it? But yeah, wow. I haven't had a yellow jacket sting in years and years and years, not since I started um, the, the sting tests on Jacksonville the Wildlife. So that was interesting. It was a nice refresher. Um, but yeah, that was really, really painful. But look at that, look at that. A little bit of a reaction there. Some of those little specks and spots. Still getting some more swelling there. But I will update you guys as we go along because I'm sure it will swell a little bit more. My arm's probably going to get pink and then we'll see what happens from there. Okay, so here we are. 
about 10 minutes after the initial sting. Ton, a ton of swelling, look at all that. It's pretty tight, hot, not very comfortable. But uh, what can you do? It's quite painful still, but it's died down from the initial uh, severity. But, uh, you know, not too bad. It's um, probably comparable to a um, really bad paper wasp or a large stinging ant of some sort. So I'll keep you all updated and I'll see how it goes on from there. Okay, here we are about, uh, I wanna say 40 minutes after the initial sting, still a ton of swelling, actually still pretty painful, surprisingly. Uh, look at that, my arm is just so ridiculously pink here. The epicenter, and then the rest of the kind of speckling and reaction. Very, very impressed with this uh, sting. Here we are about, um, 15 hours later, the morning after, lots of swelling and coloration still. You can see that initial epicenter right there. Um, a little itchy, but not too bad. Just the coloration today. Um, super, super interesting. Not terrible um, after the first few hours, but uh, quite, quite, quite impressive. Um, very, very cool sting that we have tried here with Vespula squamosa. All right, now here we are at about 48 hours. So you can see still some pink. You can see that initial little sting mark there. But all in all, not too shabby. So I think it's safe to say that the yellow jacket, um, is a super painfully stinging species of smaller hornet. And um, they're pretty comparable to most of the other stings I've taken from insects around that size. So Neoponera velosa, Paraponera clavata, Mermesia, um, Polistes carolina, they're all pretty bad, uh, but they're all pretty comparable to one another, which is interesting because I'm still on the hunt for something that's really gonna knock me down and knock me back. Um, and so far, I mean, Vespa Tropica was the worst sting, so I am expecting for um, Vespa Mandarinia, the Asian giant hornet, to be pretty bad. Um, but I'm not sure when I'll get around to doing that with the world still being closed. Um, but I have a feeling that's gonna be the most painful insect sting you can find is Vespa mandarinium, mostly because of just pure yield. They're massive, massive hornets. Um, but I was super excited to get this video filmed because I know it's been a while. Sorry, I'm shaking my camera here. I know it's been a while, um, but it's always so rewarding when you go out looking for a specific thing and you find exactly what you're looking for. So I knew that we were probably gonna be able to flip some uh, Vespa, I mean, Vespula squamosa queens and luckily we were able to find two, one getting away, but uh, I was able to get that other one and get that sting video in. Um, the lighting and the focusing uh, was, was not perfect, but um, a video is a video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, be sure to comment, be sure to share it. Um, we've got our shirts, they're in the description in the, and the, oh, sorry, the link is in the description below the video. Um, other than that, stay tuned. As it warms up, everything's starting to bounce back to life down here in Texas, and I have a good feeling about this year. I think we're gonna see a lot of growth, get a lot of new videos on the channel, and I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. So keep watching, keep liking, keep commenting, keep sharing, keep being awesome. Thank you very much. Zach out.